body. So I've got about 16.7 grams of random gold here. You can see some colour difference between some of the melts in there and some of the alluvial gold. There's going to be all sorts of different purities in here, ranging from probably around about 89% to 99.5% for some of that alluvial gold, because it's very nice. So I'm not going to have to uncourt this um, before I dissolve it, which is handy. I'm just going to melt it up, alloy it all together, and it should be more than likely over 95% pure, which means that when we dissolve the gold off in aqua regia, we won't have any silver chloride form because the silver content just isn't quite high enough to be an issue. Let's melt that up into a button and see what happens then. little furnace has been heating up for about five minutes nice and slowly now so that egg cup doesn't crack we can crank it up a bit we're ready to go here now we've just had this one litre beaker of water cooling off in the fridge for a while now and I'll pour it into this old one litre beaker that's got a crack in the bottom and we should be right to drop it into the cold water I think that there was a little bit that stuck to the side of that egg cup, but most of it worked out pretty well. That should work fine. Just gives the solution a bit more surface area to actually contact the gold and dissolve it. Whereas if I left it as one bead, it's, um, it's a lot slower process. I'll try and melt down the last of this stuck to the edge and see what happens then. See the little bead there in the middle? Let's see whether we can, we can get him out this time. That got him. Yes, yes, we know you're hot. Stop setting everything on fire. Very warm. Well, that worked well. So I've just removed that gold from the other broken beaker and put it into this good one. I am a little bit suspicious on the two different color tones here between some of the more orange colored stuff and that lighter stuff right in the center. I'm worried that maybe the golds didn't mix together perfectly, which can in turn mean that I might have blobs that are higher percentage of silver. And if it's over 10% silver, it can cause issues with trying to dissolve the gold. So we'll find out. Let's see. Start by adding some hydrochloric acid. Some of it might have had some other crap on the outside from when I poured it. So we can probably add a little bit of nitric now, I reckon.
add a little bit more nitric. I think we're pretty good to go here. It's been a bit over an hour. We've got some silver chloride that's formed in there, which is a little bit more than what I was expecting too. But that's all right, we can filter that out and deal with it later, get a little bit of free silver out of it. We'll turn it off now, we'll let it cool down, and then we'll filter it. See all the fluffy white silver chloride there? It's not much, but I'll be able to get a little bit of silver out of it. It was definitely more than I was expecting. Give this all another rinse. I've given the filter paper about 10 good rinses now, so we're good to go on transferring it into this beaker and then we can precipitate that gold out. I'm really happy with the clarity of the solution, that's pretty good for a first um, refine. We'll see how it comes up after this. Stannis chloride test on this sucker. And no reaction, which is good. All of our gold's come out of solution now. Let's filter him through. No vacuum pump here, so it's a bit of a slower process. 
tip the last bit of this in. And there's our gold. Doesn't look very goldy, but it's nice stuff, I can assure you. Just squirt out the last bit with the spray bottle. It's all of our gold in the filter paper there. It looks delicious. Wait for the last of that to filter and then we'll give it a few good rinses with some boiling water. Be good to restart the process again. Go for a bit of boiling water. Nearly got a full jar down below here, so let's just give him a with a bit of hydrochloric and then that'll nearly be our jar done <laughs> All right, all right. let's just move this to the back because that's still releasing some pretty nasty sulfur dioxide gas got our funnel upside down with the filter paper in there our paper and our contents hydrochloric acid and back on the heat. Been back on the heat there for a minute so let's add a little bit of concentrated nitric and get this reaction going because it'll produce its own heat to begin with. about seven and a half millilitres. And watch it go. Beautiful. Taken off really well. And just to confirm also that the stannous chloride that I made using um, an old pewter mug um, or a scrap off some pewter mug and some hydrochloric acid did work correctly. I've added some more sodium metabisulfite to that uh, waste solution from before and you can see the SO2 gas still bubbling away but nothing precipitating out of the solution. So that's good news. Stannous chloride worked and we got all the gold out of the solution. It's been less than five minutes and as you can see most of the gold's already gone, just a little bit left. The second refine always goes so much quicker because you're actually dealing with nearly pure elemental gold. It's very handy. First one always takes a little bit longer. Old filter paper's broken up pretty well. And we got no more gold in there. Which is excellent. I'll just leave it for a little bit longer. Let that um, filter paper break up a little bit more and then we'll be right to uh, filter it again. Alrighty, I think we're good to go with our next filtration. Okay. 
squirt the last of that in. Okay, well I've given our filter paper a lot of good rinses there. And we're looking nice and clean. So here is our beautiful royal water. Wow. Awesome clarity, I'm really happy with that. Don't mind the jar, it's a little bit dirty. We're right to uh, drop this um, gold out of the solution with a little bit of SMB and then we can filter it, chuck it in the cru a crucible and melt it up, see what we got. I'm also working on this silver chloride before the sun attacks it too much. Carefully rinsing it with boiling water. You can see it's already starting to turn a little bit purple there. And the reason for that is it's reacting with the UV of the sun through the window here. A couple more good rinses and we should be good to go. I just need to drop that pH down from any of the acids that are left in there residually. And now for the fun bit again. Should do it. Just agitated that solution so it's gone a little bit cloudy again, but it had nearly cleared up on the top already, which is a really good indicator that I used the exact right amount of nitric acid. Excess nitric acid um, will make your precipitation a lot more difficult. You'll end up having to use a lot more sodium metabisulfite. So if you slowly add your nitric incrementally to however much hydrochloric you need to cover your material. I think you'll um, you'll end up doing a lot better that way as opposed to doing the old one to three or one to four mix ratio which is pretty outdated if you ask me. While we wait for our precipitated gold to uh, finally settle down I've given this silver chloride a really good clean. Now let's add a little bit of sodium hydroxide to slowly try and convert it to silver oxide. From silver oxide we can then use glucose to bring it back to metallic silver or elemental silver careful with the addition of sodium hydroxide because it does make um, the solution quite warm, especially once you stir it. You hear the noise of the beaker changing? Slowly gets higher pitched, which indicates that the glass is um, getting hot. So take it extremely slow with the addition of sodium hydroxide. This is actually the first time that I've done this. So it'll be a bit of a fun experiment for me also. I'm hoping that if I get this done before the gold's done, which I probably will, then I'll be able to melt down the silver um, and hopefully get a weight on it and then know roughly the percentage of silver to gold in um, the original solution, which I think I underestimated. I reckon it's going to be around about 9 or 10%, which is right on the limit of what we could get away with. So we're, we're pretty lucky there. My old miscalculation. And we'll just keep adding sodium hydroxide until we see no more white flakes. Looking on the bottom of the beaker here, you can still see a few little white flecks. Not much, so just a little bit more um, sodium hydroxide and a little bit more stirring and then we're good to go. That will definitely do it. Quite confident that the silver side of things is done now. 
we've got nearly nothing white down in there at all. It's just all nice black, dark silver oxide. I did, however, add a little bit more sodium metabisulfite um, to the gold solution because it wasn't quite settling as quick as I wanted it to, so it might have needed just a touch more. So I'll do a Stannis test in a second and then check it. Although I'm nearly certain that all the gold's out of the solution, we still always do a Stannis chloride test. And that's a negative, so we're good. We're clean to start filtering. But before we do that, Here's a little bit of glucose in a beaker. Let's slowly add it to our silver oxide and see what type of reaction we get. It shouldn't take much. But I'll just carefully add it. And give it a stir. The reaction's actually meant to be quite violent once you add the sugar. So I'm gonna take my time with um, adding it in because I've never done it before. Gold's precipitated nicely. We've got a nice big chunk of ugly looking stuff down the bottom there. We're ready to filter him out. Let's just carefully pour off our excess solution here. There's our gold. Give him a few good rinses while we're doing this too. See how lucky we can get here going straight into the filter paper using the funnel this time as opposed to um, well a tapered funnel as opposed to the Buckner funnel which is flat is that way I can fold the paper up and it'll be a lot easier to um, crinkle the gold up in the bottom and put it straight in the furnace that way this is gonna go getting this out of the jar it might um, might get a little bit held up I think Yep, not ideal. Should have done it in a beaker. Give him a few nice rinses of hydrochloric. some boiling distilled water to my um, distilled water wash bottle here. So we'll give it a quick rinse with a bit of that too. And that'll about do it, I reckon. Before we wait, I'll add some more sugar to this. definitely something happening back there but it's taken a lot more sugar than what I was expecting. Right, I've rinsed our gold off about a dozen times now so we're pretty good to go. Let's take him and drop him straight into the crucible. splatter up any gold and spit it out of the crucible either so we'll tuck this over. Nice and neat. Squeeze out the rest of our liquid and she's good to go in the furnace. We won't add the borax yet, we'll wait until that paper burns up a bit before we do that.
it's lit. Slowly pouring off this um, silver solution through the filter now. Seems to be a fair bit of material still hung up in the solution itself. It hasn't actually settled and still quite a lot stuck to the sides as well. So I'm just going to have to slowly filter the whole lot. I won't be able to pour it off. We'll see what happens. Seems like the residue on the side of the beaker can be pretty easily rubbed off just with my finger. So that's handy. At least we know we'll be able to get everything out of it then. Filter paper's all burnt out now. So we can add a little bit of borax. Cover up the top. A little bit more. Beautiful. Last of this material that's about to go in now, which will be most of the sludge. And then I'll have to give it a squirt and clean the last bit out. Still a bit caught up in the bottom there, so I just put a glove on and smudge that up so it all comes out. Clean out the bottom of that beaker and put it through the filter. It's all of it. The beaker's a bit dirty on the bottom, but that, um, yeah, that all came off the beaker pretty easily actually. I'm pleased about that. Let's just let that last little bit filter out and dry out. Oh no, a bit of borax fell in there. That's lame. It's got such a nice finish on it. Rinse this out about four times now, I think, just with water. I'm just moving into um, a bit of boiling distilled water now. It should help clean up any residue of anything on there. had four good rinses with uh, boiling water now so I think we're good to go straight into the old egg cup and then I've just got our gold button soaking in a little bit of hydrofluoric acid in that plastic container as well and um, just to get the last little bit of the borax slag off She's going to come up very nice, guys. Really nice indeed. Slowly drying out. This will be done now. You can see the little bead in there. It's small though. Smaller than I was expecting, actually. Right, eh? Slag's gone a bit funny coloured, which is strange. Let's see if we can find a bit of silver here. And here we have it, folks. An absolutely beautiful button of pure bullion. Worked out... Whoop, can't flip him. Worked out really, really well. I'm super happy with it. I got a little bit of um, bubbling on top there from the borax. But that's no big deal. It's, um, she still turned out very nice. Just the colour of it's incredible and the weight... When it's pure, the weight's just unbelievable. So just dropping these on the scales now, I already know what they weigh because I've um, done the math on it. We ended up with 15.37. So that ended up being around about 92% of the total weight was pure gold. We ended up with a little silver bead here, which is just gorgeous. The silver chloride worked very well, however next time I will be doing an um, inquartation instead. Ended up with a little 0.9 bead there. So that ended up making around about 5% of the total weight, or 5.4% actually. Um, which leaves us with a little bit over 2% of just garbage that ended up being in there, which is what you'd expect I suppose for having a bit of alluvial gold mixed in with it as well as some of the um, crushing plant gold from melts. So there wouldn't have been any lead, but you'll still have a little bit of iron, you might have a little bit of zinc in there, and quite a few other things. So I think we did extremely well. I'm very confident in calling this 
Um, my last one that I did and sent off for XRF analysis came in at 99.96. Um, and this one definitely worked better. So she's, uh, she's a beautiful piece of gold. Very happy. I've also got some more refining to do soon. I'm receiving some electronic waste. So we'll be playing around with that a bit. And I haven't done that before. So that'll be another exciting video. Anyhow, I'm going to drop this in and sell it. Because it's already sold within a few hours of um, finishing making it. We'll get some cash. And that's the end of another video. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope that um, I hope that you learned something. And if you got any other questions about things that I didn't really explain well enough, feel free to ask. Just drop a comment down below. And it's just that easy. Thirteen fifty Australian dollars. I'm really happy with that. It's roughly what I estimated. Very happy. So that'll keep me going for a few more weeks. Can keep mining. Can keep producing videos. Keep living the life. Cheers, everyone.